So let me just finish with some thoughts on learning and the workforce, because I think that's going to be one of the big shifts, is as we automate more and more of what humans do, we're going to have to begin to teach and emphasize, both in institutions and in the corporation, uh, things that computers can't do, things like empathetic communication. Commu AI is going to be really good at communicating in many ways, but not empathetically. Uh, critical thinking, you know, really looking at an open-ended problem. Um, collaboration, again, these are human skills that I think will have to be developed. And interestingly enough, I'm not positive that we're currently developing those. In fact, in many ways, I think that the rise of the screen culture is sort of going against developing exactly those traits. In other words, the computers are tending to teach us to act more like computers. And I thought of this recently. I have a Fortune 1000 company I work with. The HR people told me recently that they had started a new class called Remedial Social Skills. And I said, whoa, what is that? Um, they said, well, they were having this experience that it's a slightly technical company, so they get people with four-year degrees, good transcripts, the kind of skills they want, but they never seem to have been out of their dorm rooms. And it turns out that's kind of true, because especially in big state schools, you know, where there's a little overcrowding, we've wired it so you can basically do everything from your room, from go to the library to take the tests. So I said, OK, uh, what are remedial social skills? And she said, well, first of all, it's you know, when to text, when to IM, when to send an email, when to make a phone call, when to show up in person. OK, I can see that. That's kind of business manners. I mean, someone had to teach baby boomers not to type in all caps. So, But then she said, the biggest one we're working on is how to start a conversation and how to know a conversation is over. <laughs> and I said, now you're freaking me out. <laughs> but since then, I've talked to some psychologists about this who say that actually this is, I mean, some kids are just natural conversational beings, natural social beings. But psychologists say they are seeing this diminution in social skills around that kind of spontaneity. And the theory is that this is the first generation that has had texting and IMing since before adolescence. And that, in fact, texting and IMing is asynchronous. It's a kind of communication that lets you think for a second. Uh, even if all you're going to do is text back LOL, at least you've thought about it. It's much less confrontational than face-to-face -face conversation. So if you're an awkward adolescent, and those words often go together, you probably will avoid face-to-face -face communication if you have this option of the asynchronous communication. So the fault is, you know, the fault's not really the technology. It, the technology has just made this possible. The fault is that, you know, we didn't realize that we actually may have to start teaching conversation having things in school that force kids to really begin to learn to converse for ones who apparently don't have this. So I think what we're going to see going into the future is as artificial intelligence and telepresence begins to sort of disembody the company, what is more and more important are what are the skills that are truly unique powerful human skills. And in a way, you know, that's sort of the HR department's problem, but I think it's going to be everyone's problem. Anywhere that touched by technology is going to begin to redefine what the skills are and in a way that we really haven't done for, for many, many years. So I'll just finish with one quick story, sort of made me realize that this problem is not new. This actually goes back to um, the first novel I wrote about Silicon Valley. Um, I thought, what a great topic for a novel. And this was, this was years ago. Um, I'm a futurist. I was ahead of my time. But what a great top topic for a novel, young people changing the world, making a fortune. So when you write a novel, it's like doing a nonfiction book. But you need to spend a lot of time with the people. So I gave a lot of dinner parties. And at one of these dinner parties in Palo Alto, the guest of honor was an older gentleman who'd already made a tidy fortune in the personal computer industry. So he was pretty optimistic about where things were going. And everyone else was liberal arts. Um, there were a couple lawyers and business people, a professor from Stanford. 
And at the end of dinner, my friend from Silicon Valley said he had just built a new mansion in the hills above Silicon Valley, uh, Portola Valley, for those of you who know the neighborhood. And it was quite a grand house, but what he was proudest of, because he was an engineer, and an excellent engineer, what he was proudest of was way back then, he had designed and built audio light switches. And you know, you'd walk into a room, say, turn on, the light turns on, turn off, light turns off. Every time you said dim, it came down a step. Who knows how much it cost to do these? I'm quite sure that there was an entire computer sitting behind each light processing the commands. It was that hard to do back then. But he did it, and he loved it. He was very proud of it, enjoyed it. So did his five-year-old grandson. Came to visit got audio light switches right away, took to them like a duck to water, then got sent to the other set of grandparents' house who did not have audio light switches. And the very first night, the second set of grandparents find this five-year-old standing in a darkened hallway shouting at the light, turn on, turn on. And my friend leaned across the dinner table and said, and that is a young man who will grow up believing anything is possible. And there was just silence around the table, and I know what everyone else was thinking. That is a young man who will grow up not knowing how to turn on the lights. <laughs> and I think right in there, between my friend's great optimism about the future and the real doubts people have about what might be left behind, is where we all have our work to do. Thank you.